Hey, good morning. So we will get started. Um, actually, we will get started right right away. I am um, still struggling because of the streaming uh, quality. It's uh, look that the streaming quality is a bore at the moment. And I cannot understand where that could come from. So that's a big mystery to me. My internet connection should be as so strong as it can be. Um, maybe maybe somehow related to my camera. I really don't know. Ah, okay. Another thing that uh, was a little bit of problem last week was the fact that I was unable to see your comments. Um, I don't know why this, this actually was where that was coming from, but uh, I honestly saw no comments whatsoever. And because the settings I'm using, the, the comments disappears uh, once the streaming is off. So uh, I couldn't see no communication whatsoever. So I hope that today the communication is a little bit better. And for that end, would be very nice and I uh, would really appreciate if some of you could give a, a test comment. Just type a, to chat window or test or something like that, that, that I can see like if there is a communication channel to, to your direction. Anyways, still have this warning. So now it says that the connection is, is okay. So I guess that this is a, something we can go, I suppose so. But anyways, I'm still hoping that some of you will send me a this test uh, chat. So just that I can see that we have a channel to communicate today. Yes, I see the test. Thank you. The big mystery, like I have exactly the same settings that I had a week ago. And then there were no uh, way to see any kind of uh, comments from your end. Anyways, now we finally get started. So what happens today is that we will spend first uh, hour and a half, roughly hour and a half, maybe even little little less than that. We're going to discuss about uh, three-dimensional multi-body dynamics. And uh, there's going to be um, a little bit something about the robotics that I would like to share with you in today's lecture. And <clears throat> once I'm done with this uh, technical explanation, then um, I would like to spend a little bit of time to provide the kind of like a news flash or my thoughts related to career counseling. And the career counseling is very topical because uh, at this time, you're supposed to think about what is it you're gonna do in upcoming summer and um, what are the different uh, career perspectives because you are now first year master level student so next year is a, is a really important year in the sense that you need to make a decision where to do your thesis work and then you need to make a decision which is going to be your direction in your career so i'm gonna to maintaining smooth trimming and i don't understand where that is coming from ah uh, my camera is different than it was. Could it be that? No date. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I will do is that I will change my camera to be the one of the lower quality one. Microsoft. Uh, still not changing. This one. Yeah, you see that the qua camera quality is no longer as good as it was, but I somehow think that this another camera is affecting the streaming quality. So let me wait a couple seconds to see if there's any changes. No, it's still the same problem. It's still the streaming status is poor. 
inequality. Don't understand where that is coming. Okay, guys, uh, let me know if you have a hard time to, to hear me or if the connection is uh, not understandable this time. Otherwise, I think that I just need to go. Now it's changing to be good. I think that it was somehow related to camera settings. Okay. So, but business as usual, and I see no comments from your end. So I think that it's uh, this connection is okay. So it's quality wise, it's understandable. Um, now, what we discussed a week ago was a very uh, like a preliminary discussion about the three dimensional multibody dynamics. And you actually did not learn much comparing how was your previous knowledge about the three dimensional multibody dynamics. Okay, so only video is, is bad. Okay, so somehow that's a bit of the surprising because Hmm. Still, yeah, I, I see the I see the warning. I see the warning, and I got the, like every now and then the connection is is varies between the bore and good, and is never excellent like it used to be. Just one more checking. Yeah, the connection should be 5G connection, so that should be as good as it can be. So that doesn't really explain what it is. Not so great. Okay. Okay, I've got to do one more thing. I'm going to unconnect these other cameras, or maybe that helps. Because this, this other camera is really good, but I, ha I think that I have some kind of a serious problem in my computer. I'm thinking um, motherboard problems, because whatever camera I'm using, I always have some difficulties in my connection. So. So, and by the way, this will be fixed because I already ordered the new laptop, but for some reason, it's not so easy to get the new laptop. So it seems that the, there is still a shortage of computers in worldwide. And uh, I don't know when I'm gonna get it, but uh, it's in, uh, well, it should be coming as soon as the, the LUT administration can, can get it in their access or in their desk. So anyways, so, so video is lacking a little bit, and I, I mm, uh, let's see if, the, if, there, if there is a need to do some additional changes, but I think it, um, yeah, I see, I see that the, the problem is this uh, video connection. Okay, anyway, so back to this three-dimensional multi-body dynamics. We learned a week ago that uh, Kinematics in three-dimensional multi-body dynamics is one-to-one -one comparing the kinematics in planar multi-body dynamics, in two-dimensional multi-body dynamics. I mean, the conceptionally is no difference whatsoever. There is a difference, however, in terms of um, dimensions, of course, because in three-dimensional space, we have, you know, vectors that consist of three components, whereas in a planar case, all the vectors are having two components and matrices are two by two, whereas in a three-dimensional space, surprisingly, they are three by three. So, so that's a big difference. Now, the major difference comes from the fact that, you know, this de description of rotation is a little bit cumbersome in three-dimensional space. So it's not as straightforward that it was in planar case. And now this is something that um, we need to put a little bit of attention. So that's a, how is that we can describe the rotations in three-dimensional space. And surprisingly, very surprisingly, there is still um, open, I mean, scientifically, it's a little bit of open question how to describe a particle, I mean, body rotation in three-dimensional space such the way that is mathematically as clear as possible. And you can see that when you look at the, the literature, there is every now and then there is a paper that telling, here is a better way to describe the rotation. I mean, better than it was that were available before. And, uh, and also if you look at, if you put yourself in a uh, 
bookstores like Amazon.com and you type the rotations and quaternions, you will figure out that there's an awful lot of material in that subject matter. So there's a lot of things that are still under discussion related to rotations. And now, by the way, finally, my connection is back to the excellent. So this looks promising now. So I'm still blaming the, somehow I'm blaming that um, camera. There's a nice, really high quality camera that seems not to cooperate with me. Anyways, so I'm gonna show you a little bit an example. So, uh, so if you put yourself uh, in, uh, hold on, hold on, I will show you the, my browser momentarily. Amazon.com. Yeah, maybe my internet connection wasn't that strong because, you know, when I'm using a browser, it still looks that it uh, takes a while. So, Okay, let me take a look. Yep. So what I did was that I changed my internet connection from my um, home internet connection, which seems to be the st today the stronger than my connection using um, my mobile phone. So sorry, uh, sorry that it's been a little bit of rocky road, but I think it's getting better today. So here's what I would like to share with you. So this is uh, my browser, and I put myself to Amazon.com. And I was typing the rotations and chord. Now I'm back in. Uh... Yeah, I know. I know that there was a there was a, some kind of a problem in my connection because it was completely off for a couple of seconds. What a rocky, I mean, uh, rocky road in uh, this morning. So not easy start at all. Hopefully, the week is not this bad. So now it's excellent connection, so it should be okay. Okay, so what I was about to explain to you was that, you know, there is still a quite a bit of material related to rotations and quaternions. And why is this? So is it that, uh, you know, the people that are so much focused on the multibody system dynamics, and that's what they wanted to publish books about, uh, about um, rotations and quaternions, and I still checking the con um, comments, and I got information that I'm frozen. So I'm frozen. I should not be, because at least what I can see in my OBS is that I'm moving okay. Yeah, and I'm moving okay also in my um, YouTube studio, so it should be okay. Let me know if I if this is still a problem, but not right now. All the settings is finally made in a way that my connection is excellent, and I got no complaints. No video is good. Thank you. All right. So um, books about the rotations and quaternions. What are these quaternions? What's that? That's um, cut. If I cut the corners, so that's the. Those are the description of rotations that are based on four parameters. That needs a little bit of more, you know, it's not that straightforward, but for us today, it's enough to know that we can call this um, um, like rot request equation and Euler parameters at the, as a quaternions. It's a bit more complicated story than that, but uh, let's just, uh, because it's not really our focus to look too much about the quaternions. And I was about to tell you that why this is so important and is it because of the people are so much into the multibody system dynamics? And the answer is no. That's not the reason that the rotations and the squadrons are playing such a big role. They are super important in aerospace application and games too. You know, this is where the most of the effort is coming from. And that that in games they're important because of the computer graphics. So that's what it is. So let me let me take this screen away. And let me continue with the three-dimensional multibody dynamics. And sorry that I'm still summarizing the discussion from the last week, but I will speed up. No worries. So we were we need to take a look at this guy here. This uh, 
three by three rotation matrix. That's something that is a bit of the headache. Is a little bit of headache. Um, okay, so how is that we can describe these uh, three by three by three rotation matrix? Well, in um, fall 2021, we learned that the most straightforward way to do that is by using Euler um, angles. And Euler angles is is a concept that is based on three successive rotations. So you rotate the coordinate system three times. And every time you rotate, you do the rotation with respect to already rotated coordinate system. So that's what the successive is standing for. All right, so, um, so in Euler angles, you have these three successive rotations. A most commonly used sequence of rotation is such the way that the first rotation takes a place around Z axis, then X axis and Z axis. And I've been telling to myself, at least I'm telling to myself, that this is coming from the gyrus. So it's a, it's a Z axis, X axis, and again Z axis. So that's, that's uh, at least one interpretation. So you can describe each of these rotations mathematically like it is shown in these three by three rotation matrix. And look, you know, this is kind of interesting because the column that it is the, the one where there is a zero, zero, one is always telling you where the rotation takes a place. So this is obviously Z axis. This is a X axis and this is again Z axis. And now when you're multiplying these rotation, I mean, these three by three rotations matrix together, this is how you can get your final three by three rotation matrix. Question that very likely you find in a written exam is that how is a gimbal lock? Gimbal lock. And the gimbal lock is always a problem whenever you're using three rotational parameters rotations like uh, Euler angles. And the gimbal locking means that you lost the one degrees of freedom. And well, you can do that, you can read it here. So you lose the one degrees of freedom in the three dimensional three gimbal mechanism that occurs. Now this is important. It takes a place when axis of two or three gimbals are driven in a parallel configuration. So you are losing ability to describe the rotation. That's where the locking is coming from. So it's not like mechanically they are somehow um, locked. That's not the case. So it's more like inability to describe three-dimensional rotations. That's what it is. So make sure that you're watching these uh, YouTube videos that, we, that I provided the link a week ago, because uh, this most probably will be in the written exam. All right, moving on. So then... Uh, also, a week ago, we discuss, discussed a little bit about Rotiquez equation. And Rotiquez equation is like the way to introduce us rotations based on the four parameters. Four parameters. And now, keep in mind all the time that this is a mathematical description of rotations. So it's not changing the physics. It's not possible that the body can rotate in a four different ways. That's not just the case. It's just a mathematical notation, mathematical description that avoids these difficulties associated to three parameters, which is this, these uh, inabilities to, to describe the rotations in certain configuration. All right. And the question that I, that I related to this, this concept, I think that I offered this last week as well, but just to play safe, uh, these are the questions that explain the concept of Rotiquez equation, explains the concept of Euler parameters. This is something we did not discuss a week ago, but I will explain it to you right now, I mean today. And in three-dimensional case, body orientation can be defined by using Euler angles and Euler parameters. Explain the concept of Euler angles and Euler parameters, how these two methods are different. And they're very different. So they have almost like no relation whatsoever. Anyways, so we started from uh, Rotiquez equation, and the concept of Rotiquez, Rotiquez equation is fairly simple. So you take a, a vector, a random vector, like the one that is now this band here, and you can uh, attach a unit length vector to origin of this vector here, and then you can introduce the rotation. I mean, that you can change the configuration and orientation of this original vector. 
with help of these unique length vector, such the way that you're introducing rotation along the unit length vector, which is amount of theta. Simple like that. So let me repeat. So you have your original vector, and you can attach a assisting vector, which is a unit in a length. You take a whole, and this assisting vector will go the origin of your original vector, and you can introduce the orientation, I mean, the change of the rotation that is amount of theta. Now what happens is that your vector will change its configuration from here to here, here to here. And what we're going to do next is that we're going to express the mathematical relation between the original and the final configuration of this vector. That's what we're going to do. And, what we, and once we are done with that, then we're going to get the 3 by 3 rotation matrix, which is based on four parameters. All right. Last week, we shortly looked like how is, that, how is that you can derive that. And again, I'm not too keen to introduce all the details related to derivation. But again, shortly stated, you need to use a, two assisting vectors, which is a B1 and B2. You describe the length and direction of B1 and P2, and you are able to describe the relation between the original and final configuration. That's what you eventually wanted to do. When you're, once you're able to do so, this is how the rotation matrix look like. And this is a bit confusing. You know, the rotation matrix consists of three components. First one, this one here, is an identity matrix. So it's a three by three identity matrix where the diagonal components are ones and all others are zeros. The skew symmetric, the skew symmetric is something that you take your original vector V, you take its component, remember? And you relocate this component, the skew symmetric representation. And this skew symmetric representation was something that we looked a week ago. And unfortunately, I don't have it with me today, but it was simply that you re relocating your components to your matrix, which is skewed in a way that the diagonal components are equal to zero. All right. Then you have this skew symmetric matrix power two, and then you have here, you know, this angle theta and angle theta is here as well. This is how it look. All right. So we have vector V, which consists of three components because the vector V is V1, V2, V3, like this. And then we have this angle theta. So that's a total of four parameters, four parameters. So where is a link? Where is this constraint or something that connects these four parameters together? Well, that's come from the fact that, I, remember when I was introducing this method, I like very shortly mentioned that vector V is unit in a length. This one here is a unit in a length. So these three parameters, V1, V2, and V3, cannot change as they want, but there is a one constraint related to those three components. And the constraint is a fact that vector V have to be unit in a length. That's it. Well, if we can introduce this constraint, this is how it look, you know, First component of the vector v power two, second component of the vector v power two, third component of vector v power two have to be equal to one. This is telling you, oh, this is actually a mathematical expression of constraint. So this is a constraint you have to be able to obey. So you have to take this into account. What it means? So we have initially four parameters vector V components, so that's three, and angle theta, that's fourth, and one constraint. And the one constraint is the one that is shown here. How many like decrease freedom you have left? Well, that's easy. Three. So the body can rotate in a three different ways. So that's what it is. So this is extremely too imp important to understand that you know, four parameters, whenever you're using four parameters, they cannot change as they want. There is always some kind of constraint involved. And the constraint this time is the fact that the vector V is unit in a length. All right. Now we're going to test this. 
So let me repeat one more time. Now put everything in aside and, and listen to me a little while. Now, whatever we're using for, and you guess that you know what, what follows is that there's going to be in class quiz next. Okay, so whatever we have for parameters, for parameters, they have to be constrained one way or another. This time, the constraint is the fact that the vector v, I mean, the vector v is unit in a length. That's what it is. And then moving on. In direct equation, equation, the rotation is described by four parameters, v1, v2, v3, and angle theta. These four parameters are coupled because, I mean, this basically asking what is a constraint? What is that? They, how is that they are related to each other? Options are because the angle theta is small. Second one is vector v is unit in a length because we are assuming a body to be rigid. Parameters are not coupled because a body can rotate in a four different ways. All right, so those are the options. And I see that I'm uh, kind of happy because, um, you know, the streaming is healthy now and I seem not to have any difficulties whatsoever. So I want to take you to this one, soccer gear. So I got four answers already. And I would like to get more. So seven. And when I look at my YouTube studio, I, it looked that I have 11 viewers at the moment. And uh, let me see, let me take some more coffee. It's weird that the connection was that bad. Usually the connection is the best if I use it my mobile phone, but today it wasn't. And the game is on, so the, you guys are guessing 100%. Yeah, maybe. You know, this time I, um, it very well can be 100%. And why I'm thinking that? Because uh, I only have 12 viewers in my YouTube studio. And 12 viewers, that's... Um, now is that I got 13 answers in my soccer there. But anyways, we have a 39 students in total, but a good number, I mean, percentage wise, good number of students are not here following the stream. And I'm thinking that those of you, I mean, you guys that are following the stream are the ones that are really putting attention to my talks. And if you do so, then this is ridiculously easy question, ridiculously easy. And I think it, you know, um, well, I'm, I'm also guessing the 100%. All right, so 13 answers. I think this is it. So uh, we're ready to take a look at the how is uh, results. Uh, how, and also we need to set the little bit of, uh, I, think, I think I would like to raise a par and set some kind of competition, like what if you scoring 100%? What are the things I need to do then? But you guys think about it and... Uh, and meanwhile, I will show you the results. 100%. 100%. Oh my God. So this is 100%. So um, I'm going to take a screenshot here. Just a second. Yep. There it is. Saved. Ah, look at that. I'm saved. You know, what happened again? And it definitely wasn't me. You know, somebody is, asking, is answering that... Uh, no, no, they're still not going to be dancing because, you know, take a look at the result, what they, how they change. You know, somebody just came in to play and answered incorrectly. So, uh, and uh, the one person was uh, uh, saying that uh, because we are assuming the body to be rigid. And that's not, that's not the case here. Not related to that. But the vector V is unit in a length. That's a correct one. So, close case, but not exactly. Very close. I need to admit that. Okay, so let's hide this one. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Big disappointment. Okay, and then we're gonna introduce uh, one more way we can do the uh, these rotations. And there's one more way we can do the rotation is basically based on this vertical equation. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna simply call the components we learned earlier by different names. 
And uh, to that end, we're going to first introduce the trigonometric relation as it is shown here. You know, that the sine theta can be expressed in such the way that is 2 multiplied by sine theta divided by 2 multiplied by cosine theta divided by 2. All right, so if we introduce this uh, notation change, then the rotation matrix can be expressed like it is shown here. And now what we're going to do next is that we're simply calling the components here the ones that are shown here by different names and that's it that's it what are those names those names are called Euler parameters and Euler parameters are the ones that are shown here so the they are actually theta 0 to theta 3 and these components are as it is shown here so theta 0 is simply cosine theta divided by 2 theta 1 is v1 I mean First component, the vector v, multiplied by sine theta divided by 2, and then it follows the same way. Second one is a v2 multiplied by sine di uh, theta divided by 2. Theta 3 is a v3 sine theta divided by 2. So that's it. Now, once having those notation, this is how the rotation matrix looks like. And now it's again based on four parameters. So whereas, um, constraint there is a relation how is that we can then combine things together because again remember the body can rotate in a three different ways only three different ways so it's not possible that body can have a four different rotations so they are not different if they are four so they are somehow coupled together or related together so where's the constraint here well here too remember this V is unit in a length. So once I'm introducing the same constraint that was using that I used earlier, that the vector V is unit in a length, I can express that a bit of a different way, but when using the Euler parameters, it ends up to be this one here. The Euler parameters, when you look at the length of these vector of four parameters, that have to be one. So that's my constraint. And this is coming directly from the fact that the vector v have to be unit in length. So here it is. Now, a summary. You know, four parameters, they don't have this problem about singularities or other mathematical difficulties. They do have another kind of problem. And another problem is that it's very difficult to do the physical interpretation of these parameters. So if I give you four parameters, it's so hard for a human to understand what is a body orientation based on these four parameters. Computers are dealing well with these four parameters, but the human definitely have a difficulties to do so. So that's a drawback associated with the four parameters, like Euler parameters. So that's why usually the modern softwares are behaving in a way that user interface is made such the way that there are three parameters that the user can play with, Euler angles or other ways to do it and whatever you're moving to engine i mean the solution or the solver itself then there's a mapping between the three parameters and the four parameters usually the engines are made such the way that they are based on four parameters I mean the solvers itself so the solver procedures are based on four parameters once the solution is ready and once you're ready to demonstrate the results to a user then you're going back to three parameters so that's a user procedure, because uh, these four parameters are mathematically superior, superior, whereas uh, three parameters are superior in terms of physical interpretation. So this is another question that I often ask in the written exam. So like give you an example. If I asking, what's the difference between the Euler angles and Euler parameters? Well, better to say that they have no relations, so they are completely different concepts. They both describe the rotations in three-dimensional space, but conceptually they are very, very different. Euler angles are based on three successive rotations, whereas Euler parameters are based on four parameters and one constraint. Euler angles are easy to use, but they're suffering from the singularities, Kimball locking to be more specific. Euler parameters, they don't suffer from singularities or other lockings, but they have this problem that the parameters are hard to make a physical interpretation. So that's about it. 
And now what I will do is that I will speed up a little bit because I see that I have only, uh, let me see, 50 minutes left. And within that time, I would like to cover the robot dyna, I mean, robot kinematics. And I would like to close the case about the three-dimensional multi-body system dynamics because there's another, there's an interesting topic that is waiting for us. And that's a flexible multi-body dynamics. I really want to take you guys to that particular topic. Okay, properties of rotation matrix. This is no surprises to you, so you know this already. So they are orthogonal and definition of orthogonality is that, you know, when you look at the, when you have a matrix here, and when you look at the columns of your matrix, if vector form out from these columns are perpendicular with respect to each other, that's a definition of orthogonality. So in rotation matrix, they're not just orthogonal, but they're also unit in length. So because these vectors here, let's say like, like this, they're describing the axis, a body reference coordinate system. So the body, I mean, Cartesian coordinate system is always perpendicular with respect to each other. These axes are perpendicular with respect to each other. So that's why they are orthogonal. And if you have orthogonal matrix, its transpose is, is same that it inverse, meaning that you're changing the mapping order from global to local. You can also test this by playing with the Rodriguez equation and you can change the order of rotation and you can see that this is exactly what happens to you. So this is a, a proof, mathematical proof, if that's what you want. And now these are the simple thing, like if you multiply rotation matrix by its transpose, you're gonna get the identity matrix. And in three dimensional space, you cannot change the order of rotation. This is very important. This is extremely important to understand. So no way that you can change the order of rotation. And you can make an experiment by yourself so you can take a matchbox. You can put the coordinate axis to your matchbox and you can rotate it first by X axis and then Y axis. And then, then you can change the sequence and you can figure out that the final configuration will be different. Okay, moving on, robot kinematics. So robot kinematics is something that is, uh, we're simply learning and using the technique we, we looked a little while ago. And we're introducing that to four by four matrix representation that is um, heavily used in robot kinematics. Why it is heavily used? Because it, it gives you a straightforward approach to get the kinematics without uh, no serious thinking. And you know, I always like the methods where there's no serious thinking. So if there's something that is straightforward, it's definitely going to be my favorite. Um, now, uh, these are the questions related to this subject area, how four by four matrix representation can be used in a robot kinematics. Explain the method based on Denovit Hardenberg four by four matrix representation. And we will get started from four by four representation in general. And then we're gonna take one particular case within that family. And that's gonna be the Denovit Hardenberg representation. So that's what it is. Now, robot kinematics is like this. So Here's a description of typical arm robot. And this consists of several joints and bodies. And what you wanted to do is that you wanted to have a relation between the global coordinate system, the one that is standing still, let's say the one that is located here, and the end of your robot here. That's the relation you wanted to know. And the easiest way to do that is by using four by four, um, matrix representation that easily travels you between the different links and takes you the final configuration. That's what you wanted to do in a robot kinematics in general. And how it go and then goes, you know, what's the big problem here? Well, in the robot kinematics, it's a little different than multi-body system dynamics because um, multi-body system dynamics, it's, a, it's typically a purpose to know relation from global to final configuration. That's what you wanted to do. Whereas in a robot kinematics, basically the most problematic thing is that you do know where you wanted to have your end effector or where you wanted to have your arm, end arm located at. And then you would like to figure out what are the joints 
that gives you that final configuration. And this is a typical question in robotics. And robotics, in general, there is something that is making that difficult. And that's the fact that most of the robotics, they are redundant, meaning that this final configuration can be achieved in a number of different configurations. Like here, this robotic is an example. So this one, this configuration can be obtained in a different kind of configuration. Human arm is another good example. So it's, a, it's seriously redundant. So I can, I can touch this point by this way, this way, and other ways. And I can have this configuration same, but I can still, you know, you know, twist my hands and I can keep it in a same configuration, same point all the time. So this is a singularity. How can I do it? Well, I can do it because I have such a enormous amount of computer power in my head, so it's no problem. Robotics, they don't have that much of computer power, and it sometimes is a little bit of a problem. And there are techniques that helps you to do it, but one of the fundamentals to do so is this 4x4 four four matrix representation. Okay, so basically, if we look at this in a multi-body perspective, this is how it looks. Let me just double check something. Yep, just want to know how is the streaming quality. St streaming quality is actually being very good since, I mean, right after these uh, difficulties in the beginning. Okay, so basically in a multi-body language, it means this. So you know what is the R, what is the final configuration, but you do not know the components that takes you to this final configuration. That's inverse kinematics. So inverse, meaning that you know where you would like to be, where the final configuration is supposed to be, but you do not know how what, what is a configuration that takes you to that final configuration. It means that, you know, the translation and orientation could be a question mark. Usually in the robotics, you know, it's hard to find the robotics where there's a number of parameters unknown. I mean, for a single joint, usually it's either, I mean, rotations or translation that is unknown. But when you're putting these together, then it is possible that the same configuration can be read in a number of different ways. Okay. Now, here's a, another observation that is um, good to take into account. Um, so this fits well to kinematics, forward kinematics. But inverse kinematics, um, maybe this is not the best way to, to go. But the better way to go and better way to build the systematic way to describe the kinematics is a method based on 4x4 four four matrix. 4x4 four four matrix, which there is no better way than 4x4 four four matrix. This is heavily used in, commonly used in robotics. And it goes such the way. If you directly jump to the business, it goes in a way that you take this, remember, this is what we used to deal in, a, this is R, this is what we used to deal in the multi-body system dynamics. So basically, you take these components and you re relocate these components to matrix that is having the dimension 4 multiplied by 4. Okay, first one. You take this rotation matrix, which is a three by three, and you take this and put it as a sub matrix, the bigger matrix, which is again four by four. So this occupies the um, upper left corner of your four by four matrix. Then you take your translation. As it is, no changes whatsoever. You reloc relocate that to the right upper right corner of your four by four matrix. What is left is a final row here. And a final row, you just uh, do such the way that you have here zeros. And this is, which is sometimes completely, kind of like weirdly as, or call as a scaling number. I don't understand why there would be a need to do any kind of scaling. This is, uh, this should be one. So no scaling. I don't want to do any kind of scaling here. But this is it. This is it. And then with the U bar, if you have that there too, then the vector u bar will be reconstructed as it is shown here. So you take the p vector, where the vector u bar will be put it in the top, and then the one more number with just a one. This is it. 
this is it. So it's very simple. Not very useful if you're dealing with a mind body. So not making much of a sense to use this. But when you have multiple bodies connected together, then this is actually fairly straightforward because then you can get the fi final configuration and effector, you know, the final arm location by multiplying these four by four matrices together. So it's very handy then. Makes sense. Okay, let's practice. Uh, this is as simple as it, it can be. So no surprises here. So I have here coordinate system B rotated 90 degrees with respect to global coordinate axis Z. So Z coordinate axis, so I can do that in my first uh, Euler angles. And then the, the B is translated 10 units along the X axis and five units along the Y axis. Define the P when there is a, you know, end effector or the vector U bar provided like shown here. So we can get started from uh, the P vector, the, the vector U bar. So these are the components of vector U bar. We simply relocating these components to our P vector and adding here one. So that's done, no surprises. Then you take your translation units. So look at that, there's a 10 translation in uh, X axis, along the X axis five along the y-axis, like these ones here. And then this is a rotation matrix that is not shown in details how you can compute it, but trust me, this is what it is when you have a 90 degrees rotation with respect to your global Z coordinate axis. And that's it. Well, um, okay, so now I'm not sure what, the, what this, uh, this comment was about. Okay, but anyway, so um, then you do the math, you take this four by four matrix and you P and your final configuration is the one that is, can be seen here. So just a sort of short demonstration how the kinematic works. But like I said, not really make much of a sense to use it if you have just the one body. Multiple bodies connected together. Well, then it makes sense. So then it actually started to make some sense. And here's a example. So I have here configuration where I have first the like global connect system U here, and then I have my final configuration or final body in the system, which is a D here. And then I have two different ways or two different um, coordinate settings that takes me to this T. I could travel to this T by using um, this coordinate system a here and it's shown here like this is a configuration that is shown so you take first yourself from u to a and that's going to be four by four rotation matrix or four by four matrix representation and then from a to d very straightforward and let me show you in a minute how this will happen and that's that's your final solution or alternatively you can travel from u to b b to c c to d and once you put these two notations to be equal, you know, it tells you that this relation. The only thing that differs from the multibody system dynamics is the fact that, you know, in the multibody system dynamics, this one here, this rotation matrix, is orthogonal. So you can play, I mean, you can use this, this relation as much as you want in four by four matrix representation, that's not the case. So that's not the case. All right, so you know how it works now. So that's uh, answering the first question. Now let me go back to here. So these are the questions. How four by four matrix representation can be used in a robot kinematics? Checked. So that's enough information for that. The next thing here is to explain the method based on data with heart and back four by four matrix representation. So let's take a look at that next. And we here. All right. So what's the deal with this data with heart and back? Well, the concept is nice because uh, it takes a full advantage of the fact that um, Typically, the robot arm are coupled together by using certain types of joints only. 
uh, the set of times of joins you can frequently see are the ones that are listed here. So there's a trilentrical join, revel join, and translational join. Hard to find anything out from these three different categories. So these are the different uh, different joins that you can see um, over and over again. And uh, what we can then do is that we can pre-calculate this four by four matrix representation describing the different configuration associated to length of the arm and then different connections. That's it. Why? Why it makes sense to do so? Because then, you know, the building, the final kinematics will be very, very straightforward. You just uh, do a little bit of, um, uh, I mean, that you just uh, figure out the different parameters and everything else is a, is a polar plate, polar plate. So it's something that's very easy to do. So that's the idea behind of this uh, Denon with Hartenberg. Now, take a look at these uh, different joints. You know, if you have a cylindrical joint, then you have two variables, two parameters to play with. And these two parameters are like, you know, the joint, two bodies, they can get separated from each other, like shown here, and they can rotate with respect to each other. Revolve joint, they cannot separate it, so they are standing still, like this, but they can rotate. Translational, they can only be separated, but they cannot translate. And now we, what we're going to do is that we're going to take this, this representation, which is coming from directly from 4 by 4 matrix representation, sets the way that the rotation matrix, the one that is here in uh, upper left corner, you know, I got the kind of like weird comments, so I don't know what this is, uh, this is, I cannot read this language. It looked like there's a like pocket uh, writing to me or some some kind of language that I'm not for sure don't know what that is. Okay, anyway, so uh, so we take this one here, which we can express by using Euler angles, shown here, and then that, that, that translation where there's no need to use any kind of particular technique. So this is Euler angles, and this is a uh, translation, and that's it. And then we're gonna predefine parameters corresponding to the different skin areas. So we can introduce four parameters, link parameters, sets the way that the first parameter is the length of an arm. And how this is measured, you know, the details are explained here. So, so the, basically this is a length of the arm, like shown here. How this is measured, you know, the explanation is here. And then there is another second parameter is an angle between the arm. So if there is like a beam-like body and there is a length of the beam-like body and it's twisted like this, this angle alpha is describing how much they are twisted. Moving on. The distance between the two bodies in a, in a measured in X coordinate axis, so how much they are separated like, like this. And then the final one is how much they are rotated like this, so angle theta. So those are the four parameters. And what we're going to do next is that we will take these four parameters and we pre-calculate four by four matrix representation based on these parameters. That's it. Very straightforward. First one is a length. And take a look. You know, these are the parameters, Euler angles and translation that I needed here. Angles, zeros, because we don't speak about the rotations. We speak only about the translation. What rotation? You know, based on the explanation is the one that is associated to X. That's it. You multiply, I mean, you software that information here, and this is what you're going to give it to you. We redo the whole thing. This time, it was an angle that, look at the notation, so it was a measured with respect to X. So this is obviously, you know, theta angle here. Others are zeros. You substitute it here, and you take it back, so it looked like this. And remember, only one parameter at the time is handled here. So this time is, a, uh, is this angle alpha. Moving on, so again, it's a translation. 
this time measured along jet axis. So it's this one here. So you take this set of parameters, substitute in here, put it back. This is how your three by three rotation matrix representation look like. And the final is, no, this is a wrong test. So this, you know, let me take a look what that text is supposed to be. Uh, this one here. Okay, let me, let me correct this right away. Because this, this is a wrong text here. This is supposed to be, of course, this one here. Like this. All right. Now this angle here is the first angle, error, first error parameter. This set here, and then here, and this is it. And then the final thing. You multiply these four by four matrix representation together, and this is it. This is your final four by four representation based on dynamic Hartenbach. Fairly straightforward. So that's it. How to use it? Well, this is also fairly straightforward. So basically what you need to do to use this procedure is that you need to build a table or matrix. I think this is a more table than a matrix. Sets the way that you have here columns corresponding each of these four parameters, these uh, dynamic Hartenberg parameters. Look at this again. So this is a D alpha, excuse me, A alpha. What this is a, what is this? This is a, oh yeah, A, this is correct. D and then uh, theta. Very small font, so I have a hard time to see that. And then you have columns in your table that is corresponding different bodies in your robotic system. That's pretty much what you need to do. And then you're giving parameters, I mean values for each of these parameters. So it, just to give you an example, so the first one is the length of the body. So if you want to keep the length of the body as a, as a variable, you call it as L1, like this. Second one is how much they're twisted. Maybe I cannot describe it well, but how much they're twisted like this. That's zero, of course. How much they're separated, like, how much they're separated like this? Let me see if this goes like correctly, like, th like this. How much they're separated like this? That's, of course, is zero as well. And how much they are rotated with respect to each other. So if you want to keep that as a variable, this is going to be angle theta, like it is shown, you know, here. This is the first parameter. Second parameter, I mean, second body with respect to the first one, length, then these two guys that are zeros, and then the relative uh, rotation between the bodies, theta 2. Now you're describing this body by using these notations. You're simply substituting the information here. You do the same for a second body, substituting the information here. And final configuration, you get it by multiplying these matrices together. Final location, here. Simple like that. Fairly straightforward to use. So think about it, how fast I did it. Well, I mean that, of course, I was um, kind of cut the corner. I cut the corners a little bit, but I hope that you got the concept. Hopefully you got the concept. Now, uh, the next, there is a proof, you know, that it is correct, that I made it correctly, and I recalculated the whole thing by using relative coordinates here. And um, this is not so important, but I just proved that if I'm using multi-body system dynamics and relative coordinates, well, in that case, I can get the same solution, but getting to be, um, getting to be a bit complicated when uh, you have more than just the two bodies. Okay, so I know guys a bit heavy. I know based on the comments, uh, uh, but you know we're gonna leave this car, this topic about the robot kinematics, and we're gonna take a look at the, or we're gonna wrap up the three-dimensional multi-body system dynamics. Uh, so no worries, no worries. Even if you have a hard time to follow my discussion, 
not a big problem. And what I will do is, and I'm going to summarize everything. Okay. Let's go back to questions. No, no, they're they're here. Okay. How three by three matrix representation can be used in a robot kinematics? Well, it was about this concept. Concept that you are relocating the translation and rotation to this four by four matrix representation. And then this representation allows you to take multiple bodies into account, like shown in this figure. That's roughly answering the first question. Second one was that how is that? Let me take myself back here. Explain the method based on Denon with Hardenback matrix representation. Denon with Hardenback is based on four parameters that are diff describing the different features of the system. And uh, and uh, these four parameters will be the one that I just introduced previously. And there was a question about, is there a tutorial tomorrow? Yes, there is a tutorial tomorrow. I I thought that there was already information emailed by Suraj, but I will ask Suraj to email the details about how is the tutorials and how what's gonna how things will be processed tomorrow. So thanks for reminding me on that. Okay, so then we cut them back four parameters. These are the parameters: length, angle, distance, and another angle. And this helps you to build the kinematics for any kind of Pretty much any kind of robotics you want. So that's how it goes. Short short summary about robot kinematics. Okay. Any other comments, questions this time? I should be moving on. And I see that I still would like to spend at least uh, 20 minutes before career counseling. Mm. Oh, what time? What time? Okay, let me take a look. I think at the time edit is the one that you should be able to find that solution. But let me let me show it to you. How is that I can take myself to this time edit? Um. Let me show this to you. So this is my browser again. I'm gonna go to tools, time edit. Hey, where is this time edit now? Hmm. Okay, so somebody else found it already. Thank you. So at uh, two o'clock, at two o'clock. But again, instructions will be available later today by via email. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a word with uh, Suras right after this um, this lecture. So we'll let you know. I will, I will let you know. Okay, All right. So then let's close this uh, three-dimensional multi-body system dynamics, and. Uh, and to that end, let's take a list of questions. Just one question, just a one question. So this is not so big deal. And uh, the question is not simple. And maybe you can board it out from the, you know, the final written exam. But the, it's simply saying that how the inertia tensor, inertia tensor that consists of, um, 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 mass moment of inertia and mass product of inertia. How that can be related to rotation of tenorized rotational rotational tenorized coordinates. I think this is again rotational tenorized coordinates. Oh, there is a link to join. Okay, how to join? Okay, I don't know. I I need to ask that from Masurat. So. I, Sorry about that. I'm uh, unaware of how things will, how Suras will organize the tutorial, but um, we'll ask. And like I said earlier, so Suras will email you instructions to join. I think, okay, better, maybe better not to say, but I'm thinking the he, Suras is 
plant-induced teams. But and again, I'm not 100% sure about that. And yes, you need to have a link to, to participate to that. Okay. So basically, acceleration of rotational generalized coordinates. So basically, uh, you know, the question is related to this, you know, inertia tensor, which is a mass moment of inertia in a diagonal terms, mass product of inertia in off-diagonal terms, how that can be related to acceleration of generalized coordinates. And this is something that is um, mainly the main problem of three-dimensional kinematics. We're going to shortly take a look at that and then be done. I'm going to first go slowly and then I'm going to speed up significantly because if this is the only question we wanted to learn, then there's so much details that we are not really that much interested in. So we wanted to cut the corners as much as we can. And then why we want to speed up? Because the next one coming in is uh, flexible multi-body dynamics and it's an awful lot of fun and a completely different topic. So not something that, I mean, the three-dimensional multi-body system dynamics and three-dimensional rotations in general is good to be aware of, definitely good to be aware of. Okay, so here comes the whole story. And again, I'm using this skew symmetric representation. Remember the, the one we looked a week ago. And the skew symmetric representation is something that if you have a cross product of two vectors, like A and B, shown in here in upper uh, right corner of this slide here, then you can express this cross product by converting first vector to be skew symmetric in form. And how is this skew symmetric form? This goes such the way that you do the skew symmetric representation in such the way that this, you put zeros in a diagonal, then you put the different component of your vector A in different locations. So here comes A in a minus sign. Here comes A with a first, without the minus. A2 here with minus, without minus, and A4 like it is shown here. That's your skew symmetric representation. And it helps you to describe the cross product. This is mathematically more pleasant because it allows you to do the algebraic uh, manipulations afterwards. Cross product is something like it's more, almost like a dead end. Not much you can do in that regard, but the skew symmetric uh, representation helps you to do this manipulation. Okay, so remember in a very big, and now I know that this is going to be painful, painful part of the, the lecture. This is, you know, if I'm making a representation, what's fun and what's not so much fun. Yeah, unfortunately, this is definitely least fun you can find in this course. So this is a bit problematic, a bit chaotic descri description as well. But um, hold on, walk with me. I think we can make this happen. And once uh, we're done with this, then we're going to discuss about more genetic topics. And finally, these uh, visiting lectures about the vehicle modeling and so on and so forth will come into play. So be with me and try to relax. This is going to be okay. Remember, this is the kinematic notation we're using. When you differentiate this with respect to time, you will get that description of velocity. And here comes the first complication. So, uh, you know, this is how the velocity looked like. All right. This term here, when we're dealing with the rigid bodies, will be naturally equal to zero because with the U bar is constant with respect to time in case of rigid bodies. When we deal with the flexible bodies, yeah, that's no longer the case. But at the moment, that is exactly the case. But this A dot is more complicated than it was in the case of planar case. And why it is more complicated? That's simply because angular velocity is not no longer a scalar component. So it's not longer... Uh, scalar quantity, but it's a vector quantity. And the vector quantity that can be expressed in a two different ways. It could be either angular velocity with respect to global coordinate axis or angular velocity with respect to body coordinate axis. So these are the two different ways that you can express A dot. 
you can use whatever you want. Doesn't make much that much of a difference. But um, this is how it is eventually. The difference again is that you know the skew symmetric representation here is angular velocity with respect to global coordinate axis. Skew symmetric uh, representation with the bar is an angle of velocity rep uh, representation with respect to body coordinate axis. You see the difference here. And of course, what the A is doing for this guy, it is mapping the representation to be uh, from body to global. So that's what it is. Now, using this notation, this is how the angle of velocity can be expressed. Or if you insist to use a cross product, this is how they, they can be expressed. And uh, the big difficulty here is the fact that this angle of velocity we got here, this one here, is not the same than time derivatives of our rotational parameters. And now this is exactly the answer in the question that, that I was asking in the very beginning, like how the inertia tensor is related to angular excuse me, the, the generalized coordinates, acceleration of generalized coordinates. So here's the, how you can do it. First thing is this. First super important observation is, is a bit confusing. And that's the fact that angle of velocity is not the same than generalized coordinates or time derivative of generalized coordinates. So what is this? What is this guy here, this uh, theta dot? Theta dot is your Euler angles, Euler parameters, or if you want to use some other representation of uh, rotations, that's what they are. It's easy to understand that they are not the same if you're using Euler parameters, because in case of Euler parameters, this vector here consists of four components. Sorry that this is a bit unclear. Theta 1, excuse me, theta 0, theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. Three components cannot be the same than the four components, that's clear. So there is no way to make them same. But also, this is also the fact that if you're using these um, Euler angles, so even if you're using Euler angles, then it's gonna be like this dot, theta dot. Still, they're not the same, still they're not the same. And there's no representation that makes them, this to be same, but they can be linked together. But this linking, is the one that I'm asking here. This is the one that relays the re representation to different generalized coordinates. So how you can do the linking then? The linking is based on the matrix T. And matrix T based or is different depending on what kind of uh, rotational parameters you wanted to use. And I, hey guys, don't leave. Please don't leave because I know that this is your like, oh my God, you know, I was not truthful to you guys because I said that this is going to be pleasant course. One of the best courses in LUT. And now we're in a mess like no limit. So we're discussing about something that makes absolutely no sense as it's so hard to understand. Hold on. It's just this one painful period and soon we're done. And I don't expect you to understand much, but I would like you to understand this. The angular velocity is not the same than time derivatives of rotational parameters. Rotational parameters, regardless what you do, there is no way to make them equal, but you can link them together with help of matrix T. What is this matrix T? Well, it depends on what selection of generalized coordinates you use. If you're using four rotational parameters like shown here, it definitely will have a different uh, form than using three parameters like select so in here. Even the dimensions will be different. Okay, what if using Euler angles? Euler angles may be the easiest. How is this G matrix look in that case? G matrix actually look like so in here, and it's uh, no need to memorize this, but take a look what is it you can find in this uh, representation. You can see that rotation or axis of rotation again in this G matrix. You know, this is obviously Z coordinate axis. If your first rotation is zero, then this obviously is going to be 
x coordinate axis and, the, and if uh, feet on these first rotations are zero this is again z coordinate axis so this is it this is your t matrix that relates these two things together why this is important this is important because definitely what you wanted to do is that you wanted to express your inertia properties inertia tensor by using your body coordinate axis because then it makes so easy to do so and then you need to do the computing by using generalized coordinates and now this is where you need to have this relation otherwise you cannot make it happen you just cannot make it happen this is where the t comes into play <sighs> hard stuff i know that is hard stuff okay but um let me give a shot. You know, I know that this is painful and everything. Many of you are like giving up like, okay, uh, maybe I want to browse something else in a, in a YouTube. Maybe I want to see, take a look at that. I don't know what are your favorite website you want to take a look, but you're someplace else. Still, I make a risk and I do this. This time, if we're going to score 100%, definitely there's going to be dancing. Maybe singing too, but definitely dancing for sure. So. I'm asking this. Uh, let me move on. Let me change this. Okay, I'm asking. T matrix is important because it couples the local and global coordinates, couples angular velocity vector and time derivatives of generalized coordinates. It describes the inertia properties of a body, couples global and generalized coordinates. So which one it is? And then. Uh, once we're done with that, let me take a one, let me take a look at what time it is. I think that I will just shortly continue, just shortly, and then we go to carrier counseling. Okay. And I'm not sure how I should do the carrier counseling. Should I somehow try to separate it from I think I would, what should I do is that I should make a different kind of a streaming schedule. I think that will be the easiest. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so 10 answers already. And I think that what I mean when I'm waiting you to answer, I do a little bit of changes here. I will make a streaming, another streaming for the one that is coming next. Um, take myself to YouTube Studio. Okay. Go live. Okay, I can I cannot reschedule. Re, I, I can I can schedule the stream. Okay, reuse the settings. Yeah, just a second, you know, if you're wondering what is that I'm doing meanwhile, I am um, rescheduling on other streams such that we can separate this technical discussion with uh, the one that is about to come. And the one that is about to come is a, is a carrier counseling. Carrier counseling. Okay, so let me uh, just, just a second. We will get started at uh, four. Okay, three minutes, and then we will get started. I think this is okay. Let's see. Maybe I'm not messing too much. I hope that I'm not messing too much. But this is a. Uh, 
I think that I, I did make a mistake. Well, anyways, so so we have 17 answers. Okay, this is a big surprise. How come we have 17? Because uh, at the moment when I'm looking at my YouTube studio, you know, it's not that many participants. And I have, you know, my streaming, I can see that it comes from, come out, come, come out from the two different sources. Okay, uh, correct answer is this. Hold on, hold on. I don't, I don't. Now I'm very, very confused. There is my OBS. There. Okay. What's the success rate? What are you guys saying? How much is the success rate? If it is 100%, that's going to be a big deal, I would say. Super big deal. What is your guessing? Last time it was you, three of you made a close case. It was very close, but it wasn't 100% because remember something what happened in the very end was uh, a little bit unfortunate. But what's, what's your guess about the success rate today? 80, yeah. Yeah, something like the, probably 80. Could be even less, could be less than that. 75, yeah, yeah. But that's still high. So if it would be that high, I would be very, very happy about my explanation. But um, uh, 100, we'll see. Okay, let's show the results. Others are not willing to guess. So the result is this. Oh, very nice. Hey, this is really nice. 82, 82. This is uh, really, really great. Uh, let me see. We have... Well, 80, I would say 80 is a close enough. So we have a winner and the winner is a um, student that voted that, I mean, guessed 90%. 90% is a, is a good. Okay, so now what I would like to do is that I'm planning to close this stream here and I'm about to open a new stream here, a new stream in my um, same channel. And the same, same channel is a, uh, is there is another streaming which is called Carrier Counseling 2022. So I'm gonna, again, like I say, I'm gonna end this stream and I'm gonna open another one. So take a look at the, the YouTube channel, uh, put yourself in this Carrier Counseling and uh, we're gonna close the technical discussion today to this slide, which is a 40, uh, slide ID 44. We will continue next week. And the next week, we, I mean, there are just a fine minor observations regarding the three-dimensional multi-body system dynamics. The chi was a big deal. And once we're done with the chi, there's just a few additional slides which we will cover next week. And then we're going to move on to flexible multi-body dynamics. And we will get started from finite element modeling. A lot of fun, I would say. Finite element, the way that I would like you to understand the finite element. And that for sure is a different that you're used to deal with. It's not about, you know, using a commercial software or, uh, you know, considering that there's a black boxes. There is no black boxes whatsoever. So, but what's the soul of finite element modeling that I will explain to you next week. Now, we'll close the streaming. Take yourself to another stream. I'll see you momentarily in another stream.